given to the patient and this advice is given to the caregivers also because many times the uh, patient will even after doing the best will have a moderate to severe stroke with some uh, disabilities and they may not be amenable to all the advices and third and most important part often forgotten that you involve a family physician also and give advice to family physician because it is a very useful link so coming to these advices one by one uh, one is medication advice so i am telling from my experience of last 20 years that we should always try to minimize medications i have seen so many medications on discharge tickets of stroke patients that it is very difficult for them to keep track and give medications on time so we should avoid multiple vitamin and mineral supplements yes we know that micronutrition is a very important part but give one single one and uh, use prokinetic and antiemetics very selectively because very routinely i have seen on prescriptions using prokinetics antiemetics and just because a catheter is there don't give antibiotics avoid routine antibiotics make the uh, dosing intervals very reasonable and you always mark the key medications that these are the antiplatelets statin antihypertensive drugs anti diabetic drugs and these are the key medication always empower them to self regulate certain medications so uh, encourage them to buy glucometers and bp monitors and ask them to self regulate but be careful about it because sometimes patients do self regulate too much like bp is 130 they don't give anti hypertensive because bp is normal then bp will become 180 so just guide them that if it is too much out of the range then you can only withdraw the medication or give another dose um and you uh, ask your pharmacist keep a watch on your pharmacy you ask him to give a paper envelope separate for each medication so you can write with pen above that paper that this is the bd dose this is the tds dose most of the time many pharmacists are putting all the medications in a polythene envelope not guiding the patient properly or you ask them to make a chart as per timing that these are the morning medications these are the afternoon these are in the evening and you should always encourage a family physician concept while discharging the patient who can be a useful link now what they should monitor so most commonly they will monitor bp and pulse they are very aware about it so sugars diabetics will uh, monitor to so ask them to encourage and empower them to uh, buy and use bp equipments glucometers uh, ask them to look for common complications like spasticity frozen shoulder you empower uh, the caregivers for that ask them to report any abnormal movements also and you give advance request for follow up labs if you want electrolytes on follow up liquids on follow up give an advance re request tell them that you get the test done before coming to you now there are certain things we should be very careful about in bed bound patients because not all the patients will do well many patients will have be bed bound so you ask their caregivers to look for respiratory rate sounds patterns consciousness if they are catheterized color and consistency of urine amount of sputum if they are tracheostomized what is the consistency and you involve a family physician so all the patients will not do well so in, in these patients these are specific things which uh, you have to tell because many times we have seen that after two months of struggle you send a patient home three days later he comes into the emergency arrested and you can't do anything about it then comes to lifestyle advice this is patients for mild uh, mild to moderate stroke and whatever ability they have you have to advise them regular exercise i would particularly advise to encourage sports if they are fit enough to play because it sports have both physical and mental domain exercise only has a physical domain so i encourage sports uh, advise them adequate sleep and uh, advise them to prefer vocations where their circadian rhythm is maintained and even if they have a modest intake of tobacco and alcohol you please offer de addiction help because many of time they will say that my intake is very infrequent and all but it matters a lot and there are certain apps like stroke risk calculators so they will quantify their stroke risk that their risk is 5% or 10% or 20% in last two or three years so this monitoring helps them and keeps them motivated and then coming to the dietary advice thankfully our indian patients are very diet conscious so they will themselves ask lot of things about the diet 
So first you have to ask that who cooks the food in your home. Because if a 28-year-old boy and you give him dietary advice and he has never entered kitchen and how he'll uh, understand and he will not understand. So make simple diet charts because many times I have seen that you have a printed diet charts which are very complicated. Patients will not understand. You have 15, 20 things written on them, various quantities and all. So you just make simple charts that these foods are beneficial for you. These foods should be avoided and these foods are in uh, reasonable limit you can take. Uh, and always consider regional food preferences. Be very strict on sugar and salt. And in many rural areas, dairy products are regular part of diet. So you ask them to shift to more acceptable dairy products like uh, if they drink lassi, you can ask them to go for chaj, curd, paneer, which are more acceptable dairy products rather than cream, butter and all. And you have to advise them to avoid all packaged, processed and fast food, regardless of their content, they should be avoided. And uh, of course, for RT patients, you need professional help from the dietitian. Uh, to make adequate pastes and solutions to uh, feed them properly. Now coming you know, last to the rehabilitation advice. So you have to keep their motivation high, number one. And you have to do that by setting realistic short-term targets that what you can achieve. Uh, so they will be more motivated. And you have to empower caregivers for home rehab. Uh, one thing we have not understood that uh, many uh, patients are calling physiotherapists daily to their house and it is actually very costly and over a period of two to three months their uh, rehabilitation costs become very enormous. So you have to always empower caregivers. You ask them that active passive mobilization range of movements are good enough and many times fancy equipments doesn't help much so they can uh, continue with their rehab and cognitive rehab is an important part of rehab. So always inquire about patient's mood, behavioral changes, whether he has any neglect and all. And you have to identify good physiotherapist, good speech therapist and psychologist in your vicinity. Because I have seen that there is wide variation in their ability. Some physiotherapists are really very good, some are not at good at all. So what I do, I my, most of the time I visit my rehab department saying that I have a knee injury, I have an elbow injury, I have a shoulder injury and then ask them to uh, help me. So just like a malingering, but it helps me identifying uh, that who is good and who is not. So thank you so much.